something like this looks like complete science fiction that's at least decades away. But augmented reality contact lenses might be closer on the horizon than you might think. Wow, that is incredible. Heart rate data, speed, and even with your eyes shut, you will be able to see this because it's lit up and obviously the lens is sitting beneath your eyelid. It feels seriously sci-fi. On the fall of 2015, three Silicon Valley veterans, with two of them having bad eyesight, formed a secretive startup under the cover name Tectus while they worked in stealth mode, not knowing if what they were doing would even be feasible. And as the years went by, they recruited talent from Apple, Amazon, HP, Google, and more to invent something that had never been built before using technology that was said to have to be called in from the future. Fast forward to January 2020, and the Tectus team came out of stealth mode under their new name Mojo, a startup with over $100 million in funding that promises to elevate humanity's vision with the world's first augmented reality contact lenses as a new player in the trillion dollar cyborg revolution. AR has been around for a while now, so it's not anything special. We've seen things like Google Glass that can be extremely useful, but AR has never really taken off. Probably because people don't want to look like dorks walking around wearing something like that. That's where Mojo Vision claims to come in. They've created the world's first real smart contact lenses that's able to display useful heads up information onto your vision without having something obtrusive like Google Glass. They're calling this new form of tech invisible computing, an albeit cheesy marketing term that really just means instead of computers being a separate bulky tool that gets in the way of your day to day life, it seamlessly integrates into your life so that it's there when you need it hands free and you can forget that it even exists when you don't need it. Right now, their focus is helping people with different vision impairments see better by overlaying images over their vision, zooming in on objects, enhancing objects in their field of view, and other stuff like that. This one really hits home for me personally because I have a really weak left eye, so most of my vision is perceived through my right eye with my left really only serving as peripheral vision. Something like this could possibly change all of that and allow me to see the world in a whole new perspective without evasive, expensive, and scary eye surgery. But there are others who aren't fortunate as me and have much more impaired vision. And with something like Mojo or other startups, you can imagine that humanity's future will probably look a lot clearer. But it doesn't stop there because in the future, their goal is to make the lives of everyday people like you and I a little bit easier, a little bit safer, and a little bit more convenient. For example, instead of having to look down at your phone for navigation instructions and thus taking your eyes off the road, your next turn would be overlaid onto the road in the real world. Meaning that in the future, I can potentially finally play Need for Speed or Midnight Club in real life. And the options with how AR lenses can help us in our day-to-day -day lives are really endless. Night vision, weather, new text messages, translation, notifications from your phone, health metrics like heart rate, fun stuff like learning about new constellations in the sky as you're looking at it, helping fighter fighters see inside burning buildings, and much more. That is the power of this new industry that Mojo, Neuralink, and other startups are participating in, that I'm coining the cyborg revolution. See, humans have different levels of needs that need to be fulfilled in a certain order, and every business works within these different levels. The first level of needs are physiological needs, things that we need to stay alive. Air, food, water, shelter, sleep, clothing, all that good stuff. The next need is our need for safety, our personal safety, safety of employment, health, property, etc. And the following levels after that are more high-level concepts that are nice to haves, but wouldn't really matter all that much if you were out on the street hungry, cold, and jobless. And those are love, esteem, and self-actualization. This is what's called Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And in business, the lower on that hierarchy of needs that you're serving to your customers, the more evergreen and the more bulletproof your industry is gonna be. During a recession or a depression, people probably aren't going to be going out and paying their hard-earned money for escape rooms, expensive avocado toast, or indoor trampoline parks, but they'll probably still buy toilet paper. If you're blind or you damage your eyes in an accident, you're probably still going to be more inclined to do business with a company like Mojo even if money is tight. And this is what I love about companies like Mojo. They're pushing the boundaries of what's possible with humanity by improving the bottleneck of the connection between our archaic biological bodies and the outside world. And the way they achieve this is by providing a new solution to such a basic level human need, such as eyesight. <laughs> 
To be able to make what's basically a microcomputer inside of a contact lens, they've had to invent everything from scratch. The bread and butter of the device is the world's smallest and densest micro LED display that contains 77,000 pixels in the size of a grain of sand. This micro display is then positioned in the contact lens in a way to mainline its light towards a tiny part of your retina that can see the light the best, which is an indented area in the back of your eye called the fovea. And because it's a small grain of sand sized object that close to your eye, you hardly see the physical display while wearing it. From there, those 77,000 pixels are used to display all that important information we talked about in a night vision looking green hue. Along with the display, all the other components needed to make it work will also be housed in the contact lens itself, including a computer processing chip, an image sensor, a tiny day long battery, and in the future, the contact will include other cool tech like an eye tracking sensor, communications chip, and maybe it will even be able to be powered wirelessly from an external wearable that you wear around your neck. Since it's a contact lens after all, if you already have an eye prescription, that prescription could be built into the contact lens itself so that you get the benefits of both regular contact lenses and smart ones. And just like regular contact lenses, you put it in in the morning and then you take it out at night into a cleaning case that also charges it, much like an AirPods case. It's a contact lens. You put it in your eye in the morning and you take it out at night and we try to provide value to you throughout the day. When you take it out at night, you put it into a cleaning case that also charges the batteries. It's very comfortable. It fits to your eye. It corrects your vision. Uh, when you wear it, so if you have a prescription, uh, we build the prescription into the lens. Although the progress Mojo has made in just five years is pretty insane, there's still a long road ahead for them. Currently, they've tested all those micro components, including the sensor and CPU outside of the lens, and all that's left to get a fully independent contact lens is to fit it all together. They're very far from going on sale to the average consumer, they're still at a point where only employees are allowed to try the contact lenses on, and they've barely started the clinical studies that would need to pass FDA approval. Speaking of the FDA, they've been surprisingly supportive of Mojo by putting them on a fast track program made to get important life changing medical devices approved and out to the public as fast as possible. They've also been able to partner with a nonprofit that helps people with blindness and impaired vision to use as kind of like a ground zero for testing and tweaking the contacts. And much like Neuralink, their plan is to roll out a version to help the visually impaired patients first, then they'll be targeting enterprise customers that would be able to maybe make their money back from something like this to justify the high cost that they'll probably be priced at, and then eventually, there'll be a consumer version for us plebs. Damn it. There's also a huge concern about wearing a camera on you that's connected to the internet throughout the day and your potential lack of all privacy whatsoever. An issue that Google Glass faced was that people were concerned about being recorded by the wearers of the glasses. But at least with Google Glass, you could tell if someone was wearing it. And as this tech gets more and more discreet, this could pose an even bigger privacy concern even if the wearer themselves are comfortable with the privacy trade-offs. Mojo is already keenly aware of these concerns, but there's still a long way to go and a lot can change. And even with all that being said, there's still the valid question of which if they're able to do all of this in a contact lens, wouldn't an improved version of something like Google Glass using the same micro components to make it look indistinguishable from regular glasses be a faster way to get to market and to make it more accessible in terms of cost, complexity, and battery life? Unfortunately, I am not a scientist, so who knows? But what I do know for sure is that this is insanely cool, and Drew, Mike, Michael, Steve, Corbin, and the entire team at Mojo, if you're watching this, put me on the waitlist. I am so down. Thanks for being part of the Watch the End Club. Would you wear one of these yourselves? I already said I'm like 100% down to get Neuralink installed in me, so like an external eye contact. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. If you are new to this channel, I do video essays like this every single week going over the best in past, present, and future businesses just like this one. So you should definitely consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell because it's free and you can dislike and unsub whenever you want. If you want to support this project financially, you can check out some of the links in the video description below to some awesome products for myself and my partners that you guys can check out. That is going to wrap it up for this video. You've been awesome. I've been Jake. I'll see you guys in the next one.